Welcome everybody to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles panel! How are you guys doing? Uh, my name is Andre, I run the YouTube channel Black Nerd Comedy. Yeah. Thank you so much. Big fan of the Ninja Turtles, been watching it since the 80s, been watching all the movies, all the different versions of the series, and a huge fan of this version here on Nickelodeon. You guys liking this show so far? Thought some turtle fans were in the house. Well, we're not gonna waste any time. We want to bring all these people out because I'm sure we got lots of questions, lots of sneak peeks, lots of cool stuff that's gonna happen in this panel. So let's go ahead and get it started. I'm gonna bring out the people that make it all happen behind the scenes: the executive producer and the head writer of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Give it up for Ciro Nielli and Brandon Allman. How you guys doing? Hello, San Diego. And I believe we have some voice actors here today. So starting off, you may have seen this guy in the show as a human, Storenko, but now you see him as a rhino, rock steady. Let's give a big round of applause for Fred Tedeschel. <laughs> Next up, new to the Turtles universe, but a very beloved character. You know him as Tiger Claw. Give it up for Eric Bowser! Whoop, 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 whoop. Last time I wore my Tiger Claw shirt, today I'm wearing my Hung shirt. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, these guys work for the evil mastermind, the main villain behind this show, the shredder himself, Kevin Michael Richardson! How y'all doing? Yeah. Nice. All right. <laughs> got some new recruits in the audience, all right. We got a lot of villains up here. We need to bring up some turtles, right? You know him, you love him. He's the funster, he's the joker. He yells booyaka shy every chance he gets. Give it up for Michelangelo Greg Sykes! <laughs> what up, Trevor? How y'all doing? <laughs> booyaka shy! <laughs> That's what's up. Hot <laughs> dog! <laughs> This next guy, if you're an old school turtle fan, you might remember him as Raphael, but nowadays he's a smooth Donatello. Ooh. Rob Paulson! Hi, you guys! Hi! But the, the, the torch has been passed, the new Raphael on the team. Give it up for Sean Aston! And finally, the leader in blue does everything he takes to get his ninjas through. Give it up for Leonardo, Seth Green! It's good morning so far, right? Yeah. So uh, we are right now in the thick of season three of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which has been a good, good season so far. Really been enjoying it. Uh, a lot of mature things have happened this year. You know, the maturity, I would say, is like the biggest theme of this. And one of the big things is that the turtles had a little bit of a defeat and had to retire to the farmhouse for a little bit. In the farmhouse episodes. So can you tell us what that experience was like being in a new location and, uh, and having to have this time for the turtles to reflect on what happened? Sarah? Well, I mean, I, th I think it was, uh, I was always a big fan of that story arc in the Turtles, in the original Mirage series, you know? And it was like, uh, leading up to it, we had to actually get Leo there, too. So Leo was going through a lot of physical problems, and, and through that, he was facing a lot of fears and personal kind of doubt. And that, that farmhouse and that kind of setting was kind of a good place for the Turtles to kind of lick their wounds and kind of, you know, get their mojo back. And it was also nice. I, I always wanted to see, uh, since the beginning, I always wanted to see the Turtles in nature. Yeah. You know, we forget that they don't really live. Turtles don't naturally inhabit New York City. We're so used to that, you know? So it's like, yeah, what would it look like if the turtles are meditating on a rock in a stream? It'd be kind of amazing. So 
yeah, that was uh, something I always wanted to do, and uh, you know, that's one of the reasons third season is kind of my favorite right now. Awesome. And while we were they were at the farmhouse, I noticed a lot of references, Brandon, to some uh, to some horror elements. We had a little bit of Friday Thirteenth, Little Nightmare on Elm Street. You know. oh. Was that a fun thing to get them in that location to play a little bit more of the horror elements of the show? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Cyril and I are huge horror fans. I mean, we've got we drop references to Nightmare on Elm Street, like you said, Evil Dead, uh, you know, The Thing, uh, all of our favorite '80s horror movies. I mean, and you're going to see more horror references as we go. But you know, we grew up watching all these amazing horror films, so we wanted to incorporate as much as we could into season three. And I know these guys are big horror fans as well. So, yeah, did you guys? What did you guys think of all the horror stuff? Were you into it? Yeah. All right. Yes. Excellent. Tell the uh, tell the Nickelodeon executives that you love horror and you want more. Yeah. And you also brought a new team to season three to help the turtles out, the Mighty Mutanimals. <laughs> Woohoo! So, uh, what was it like? <laughs> so, what was it like, Cyril, bringing that back? And uh, will we ever see them again? Uh, the Mighty Mutanimals was, uh, I mean, yeah, they're definitely coming back. Um, there's definitely some lineup changes that we're going to be able to do along the way. Um, some characters that might join the Mighty Mutanimals could be Muckman in the future. I know Muckman's here in the audience, actually, Grant. Yeah. Yeah. Where is he? You guys want to buck him later yeah, for autographs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also Robbie Rist, who plays Mondo Gecko. Yeah. Who was the original Michelangelo in the 90, 1990 movie. Nice. And that's something that's interesting about this show, is you bring these classic characters back, but you do uh, different versions of them. Is that a balance, particularly with the Turtle fan base, who can be very vocal sometimes? Uh, is, it, is it an interesting mix of bringing back a classic character, but at the same time making it your own? Well, yeah, that's the goal. It's like, we want to bring back these classic characters, you know, from the comics, from the, the OG, you know, 80s and 90s uh, turtle cartoon. Like, we just want to, I mean, we love these characters. We want to bring them back. We want to we wanna put our own spin on it, you know? Like, we don't want to just rehash it. We want to do something cool and different and unique and just, just have fun with it. I mean, we love these characters and we want to just, you know, bring them to life. Awesome, awesome. Well, they're doing a great job, right? You just think they're doing a great job so far? <laughs> So I definitely want to talk to these cast members a little bit about their, about their experience on the show. It's been really good. First off, um, actually a couple weeks ago, I actually got to see them do a voice recording session. And let me tell you, anybody that thinks voice acting is just like, oh, they just get them talking microphone. No, these guys work hard. They were doing multiple takes. They had to bring emotions to their lines. This is really hard work, and they're doing a really great job. We should give them thanks for that. You know, applause for that. Yeah. They are doing some real good work there. Really appreciate that. So uh, one of the things, uh, Seth, I was, uh, remember after the session, something you talked about that I thought was really interesting. You, of course they do all the dialogue, but all the like grunts and fights and the noises that you hear, those aren't sound effects. That's you guys doing those. So what is like bringing the emotion to just random noises like that? Well, I, I always assumed after recording, you know, literally thousands of like, uh, uh, yeah, kind of things that they'd build like a sound bank that was labeled specifically and could be drawn from but you know we actually do new sounds every scene every yeah, time yeah seth insists on punching me in the stomach for the yeah the well you got to get that realism and the way that your lungs expel air it's different when you're like doing it yourself versus when you're hit right so well i mean Here, let's but, show them you want to okay uh -oh. <laughs> That was great. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Years of training. Years of training. Beautiful. By the way, the person that yelled action right there is the wonderful Andrea Romano. Yeah, Andrea yeah, Romano, yeah. stand up. She's the bomb. Yeah, that's, that's the truth, because Andrea will be like, yeah, so it's got to be like a high end. You do three in a row, so it's like a leap and then a hit, hit, which is a fall to an impact. So it's like, hit, uh, ho, uh. Yeah. And then we and then just I'll put just... on a James Brown record and it's the same thing. <laughs> 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 I don't Loop, that... Looping is when they, they finished all the animation, but you're going back because your sounds didn't exactly match the ones that they did. So you've got to kind of, no, no, I think his mouth is going, ah, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not quite sure. Kind of a gritted teeth, but it's open right here. So it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, you do a lot of that. <laughs> and, uh, and Seth, how has it been, because um, Leonardo's going through a lot of changes with like dealing with Karai and learning new things from Splinter, and then obviously you were a change by being the new voice of Leonardo for the series. Sure. So, oh, uh, thanks, man. Yeah. 
Um, so you do you just... feel this is uh, Leonardo's like steps to becoming the true leader, and then how has it been for you being a part of the cast as the um, It's been amazing. I deeply love the Turtles as a property, and so getting to be a part of it, especially in this role, is insane for me. And I, I love acting, so I try really hard <laughs> um, to be good in all the scenes. And I've also uh, known all these guys for a long time, so we have an incredible rapport and comfort with each other as performers, which is great. Um, and everybody knows what they want, so it's, it's very easy to follow. Yes. Well, one of the cool things I noticed, particularly again in the Farmhouse episodes, when Leonardo was injured, Sean, Raphael kind of stepped up. He's usually the hothead, he's usually the one with the attitude, but it seemed like you had a lot of scenes where you were very compassionate towards Leonardo, you kept the spirits up for Donatello, Michael, and Casey. Is that a fun balance to play with that character who sometimes can have this gruff side, but at the same time, that soft side shows? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's... Um fun for Brandon and Ciro to take a character who's known for being this badass tough guy and kind of playing against it, letting, letting him be, uh, yeah, like you said, a little more thoughtful. And, and I think he, he also gains a little bit of respect for, uh, for what Leo's role as a leader is. You know, it's not, it's not all, it's, uh, you know, it's easy to sit back for Raph and be like, come on, what are you doing? What? Let's do this, let's do that, and, and question him. And then when, he, when it's, he's got to step in and lead, it's like, you know, it ain't all it's cracked up to be. That's good. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people like the Leo Raph fight, but I really do like those moments when you're compassionate towards each other. Well, and I, I really enjoyed getting to take advantage of that. Leo all the time is, is meant to be stern and serious and in control and more mature than the other turtles. And it's, it's, it was really fun to get to explore his vulnerability, get to explore you know, where, his, where his real teenageness is. Yeah. Mm. Now, Sean, I couldn't help but notice in a couple episodes, there was an episode where, you, where the turtles LARPed. You guys remember that? <laughs> uh, Raphael wasn't a fan of rings in that episode. There was another episode where you came up from underwater and you were upset there wasn't a sunken pirate ship there. Uh, do you appreciate these little nods and references to uh, Sean's past? I... Rudy, Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> Should get that going. Um, yeah, I love it. I love it when they when I kind of look around like, did they get? Did they mean that? Is that like an accident? They know that's like a Goonies thing, right? Like, oh, they did that on purpose. Okay, yeah, cool, awesome, love it, great, it's great. It's always fun on the Monday. And morning then you get to like, uh, oh, sorry, sir. It's all right. It's just I was just walking in and seeing you and Corey Feldman together on the couch. Right, that's what I was gonna say. Like, oh. yeah. Like, I just, I just went to work in 1986. Yeah. <laughs> 1986 is ready to go back to work anytime you're ready for us. <laughs> but they, they, <laughs> the, uh, you were talking about how Raph is, does, you know, sensitive side. He's, he's got Spike. I mean, those first scenes with Spike when he's, like, talking softly to him and it's his pet and he loves him. I was loving that. And then it turns into Corey. <laughs> Slash, and you're like, ah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, yeah. Donatello, uh, you had a bit of a fling with Bigfoot uh, in this Aww. season. <laughs> so you learned some lessons about you know, what it's like to love and not love. Does this mean that from that we'll see Donatello seeing April more as a friend, or do we think that Apritello is still a thing that's going to be going well, on? Well, I hope it's Apritello. I mean, you know, uh, Bigfoot is a fine dancer <laughs> and a generally decent being, but really just stinks. Uh, just so smelly. And April doesn't. She smells great. Um, I, I am grateful to play any character any time in which I get anybody to give me a smooch. So I'll take it. Um, uh, thank you, pal. Um, let me take care of you right now, buddy. Um, I gotta tell you, the... Uh, the opportunity to be loved up by Bigfoot was something I will probably never, ever forget, <laughs> irrespective of how much therapy I get. Uh, but the opportunity to have Apritello, and we were talking about this earlier in a, um, in a press thing upstairs. Um, the, uh, I, I love the fact that there is this really cool, unrequited romance between Donnie and April, and then you throw Casey Jones, Josh Peck into the mix, yeah. and it adds a totally unique spin to the franchise. And I would submit that it also adds a bunch of viewers who are interested in, in the romantic aspect of it, which I love. I think it's really cool. We get, I, I travel around a lot, and I get a lot of younger girls who say, oh, my God, I love April Tello. It's so cute. It's so great. That's fantastic. And I am the 
very fortunate beneficiary of all that love. <laughs> the creep factor notwithstanding, as I am three times... <laughs> Amazing. As I am three times older than Mae Whitman, but <laughs> she's still lo- just gorgeous. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Aren't Greg, you glad you asked me? No, no, no. I, yeah. I think that was the, the nice legal answer you could say. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Greg, uh, what's fun about Michelangelo is, you know, he, he sometimes is the jokester and has fun, but we've seen a couple of times where the turtles went to Dimension X, and when they go to Dimension X, Michelangelo is the leader. He's, yeah, the, he's the hardcore. So what is it like playing that part where you're, you're one way in on Earth, but then when you go to Dimension X, you're in charge? Well, it's like people are actually finally seeing me for who I really am. Yeah. <laughs> the leader of the turtles, the brains behind everything. Um, so yeah, now you all know. It feels good. <laughs> And why do you think it's Michelangelo that connects with the New Mutants? Like, of course, we had the episode where Michelangelo and Mondo Gecko got to hang out. And what is it like for you to see that Michelangelo has this connection and bond with New Mutants, like naming them and all that stuff? Well, I mean, Mikey loves name things, as do I in real life. Um, but Mike, you know, Mikey just has an open heart and open mind. He's, he's accepting of everybody and everything until they cross him or cross the turtles, and then you better watch out. Um, Yeah, it's cool. I like hanging out with other mutants. (laughs) Don't you? (laughs) Greg, I think that's the point of why everyone's here. Oh, yeah, Yeah. exactly. Life imitates art. And speaking of mutants, Fred, uh, you became a mutant, (laughs) or or, or, or Serenko became a mutant. One of the most popular and most requested mutants on the show is Rockstar. Thank (laughs) you, my friend. I am appreciating this, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so when did you find out that you were going to now become Rocksteady, yeah. and what did you want to bring different to this character? Well, I before? was not aware. I didn't realize it was... I'm, I'm stuck in the voice. <laughs> this is what happened when you do voiceover. You're st- stuck. I can't get out. No, I didn't... Uh, Please, my real boy. Here we are. I, I, didn't, <clears throat> I didn't realize that... Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize uh, it was going to go that way. Uh, I was playing a very just a, a cold-hearted, kind of comical, uh, illegal arms dealer, terrible criminal kind of guy, uh, even Strenko. And I, I uh, then seeing the uh, turning into the mutant, I guess we wanted to bring uh, a little more. I didn't realize how much humor we were going to have. It ended up being so funny. And playing off of uh, JB Smoove uh, is just wow. So we end up being these sort of these villains that are kind of fun, you know, they're sort of almost friends, but not really, and we're keep, we keep messing up. And so it's just a blast. So I just wanted to give him, I think we're finding out that he's actually deep down inside kind of a softy. You know, he just wants to, to get along, gee, you know, I want to <laughs> do, 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 do well, you know. I, I think turtles are kind of cool, but I will, I will hurt them, you know. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been fun. A lot of fun. I'm so I'm honored to do it, man. It's been it's such an incredible uh, character to. You know, I love you, Fred Tatashore. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Over there, young man. Where are you? Yeah. Now we've got a lot of classic mutants on the show, make it, make it getting revised. But Eric, you voice a brand new character on yes. the show. That's been. Yeah. So were there any nerves? Because again, like I said, turtle fan base can be very vocal. Were you nervous at all bringing this new character? And how have you felt seeing that it's being so positively received? Oh yeah, these guys have set up such a grand stage. Uh, and again, any voiceover artist's dream is to, you know, take a stab at something that is considered a classic character. But in my case for Tiger Claw, it's like, wow, I get to join this universe and give it my own original spin. And, and really it's... Like my dream, maybe 20 reboots from now, another young Filipino-Canadian might have a, <laughs> a shot at this voiceover <laughs> game. Yeah, boy. I will Wait pass minute, the torch Canadian? to you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's been a thrill, and I'm so thankful uh, to the fans, you guys, to, to have uh, the response that it, it has. So. Thank you. And Kevin. Uh, yes. Woo! Woo! Kevin, you've had a very interesting arc, particularly with Shredder and Cry, because you still see this passion, you know, that, 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 that was your daughter, even though we know the whole backstory by it. But at the same time, you're putting mind control worms inside of her, trying to use her as a weapon. 
Is that something that's challenging or, or interesting for you as Shredder to sort of go through these different range of emotions for this villain as opposed to just being like stock villain? Well, I think Shredder's just misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, yeah, he's definitely, well, I mean, the guy's just bent on vengeance and, uh, <laughs> you know, living a lie. So uh, personally, I, he's a little messed up, you know. I, I mean, he's a deep cat. And uh, he's, he's just into power, you know, and what do people with power want? More power. And that's what Shredder's basically all about. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And what better power than that powerful voice? I mean, see, it's like, ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm Kevin Michael Richardson. <laughs> I do all his ADR when he's not there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could be Greg Sykes too, brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm Kevin Michael Richardson. <laughs> I mean, you, really, you really want to go there, dude? Yeah, you want to go there? Do you really want to go Turtles, there? Turtles, I'm going to get you. No, you want to go there, man? <laughs> okay, all right. I tell you what. You be the 300-pound black guy, okay? <laughs> all right, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah, man. I'll be in 290 I'm going to love pounds. this show. I love it a lot. <laughs> oh, my God. We got a little cowabunga shred head That's going like on That's like 185. Right <laughs> I'm glad somebody got that reference. I appreciate it. You guys do great voices. I think we should see them do some, some voices. You guys see that? See that? We were... Be before we get into that, I think it would only be appropriate to bring up Andrea Romano Andrea here Romano. as a spirit yeah. animal. Just here, to kind of... <laughs> so we Come were... on up here, gorgeous. So we were mulling around, thinking like, oh, what scene from the show could we bring up to do a table read? And then it was decided, you guys are fans, you guys are here. Why don't we give you an exclusive mini episode <laughs> exclusive just to San Diego Comic Con just for you guys for being here today. director. How about that? You're getting your own episode. So whenever, they, whenever they're like, there's 100 some episodes, you go, no, there's 101 because I went to Comic Con panels. Oh, there we go. You don't know about that episode. You're not a true turtle fan. Uh, so I'm going to get the setting for you and then we'll go right into this. So the setting is um, the turtles find out that there is a place for them to investigate where the shredder may be hiding. They have to leave New York City and go to San Diego to attend a certain comic convention. Go figure. Just to see what's going on. That is the scene set. Let's see what happens. Oh, do you want to read us in? I'll happy to. Sure. <clears throat> Theo, Raph, Donnie, and Mike are incognito at San Diego Comic Con. They're wearing the classic trench coat disguise as they try to blend in with the crowds. Whoa, look at all the people. Look at all the crazy cosplay, yo. That's cosplay? I actually thought most of them were mutants. Yeah, yeah, real funny, Raph. Guys, this is incredible. This is the one time we can actually go out in public and mingle with real people. Yeah, dressed like flashers. That's great, Donnie. <gasps> dude, look over there, man. I think that dude's cosplaying mazes and mutants. Yo, dude, stand up. Stand up. Yeah, yeah, you fantasy guy, come on. Come on, I knew we should have come in our LARPing costumes, dudes. Turtles dressed as elves, dwarves, and hobbits make zero sense, seriously. <laughs> Turtle hobbits? <laughs> what are you talking about, Raph? I just saw a girl dressed as Optimus Prime Cobra Commander and Papa Smurf at the same time. <laughs> it's called crossplay, dude. It's the new Shiznick. Whoa, 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 hold up. Look at that. Is she supposed to be April? Stand up, April. Now that is a cutie. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to drive the turtleneck over all these crowds. There's a line for everything. And the Bathrooms. Oh, man, our sewer is cleaner. <laughs> I have seen things living inside those toilets that would turn your shell green, dude. Guys, be serious. We have to look out for Shredder. Wait, why are there so many people dressed as Shredder? <laughs> With costumes consisting mostly of tinfoil. Any, anyone in the audience dressed as Shredder, stand up. Oh, do we have any girl shredders out there? Can I get a what, what? <laughs> what, what? Can I get a what, what? <laughs> That's what's up. What, what? 
Master Shredder, I regret to report that the exclusive Legend of Korra Chief Bei Fong statue is sold out. <laughs> what? How can they not make enough? I must have that statue. Do you know how much it's already going for on eBay? Find out who is in charge of production and have them destroyed. Of course, Master Shredder. Starenko, what are you doing here? I thought I told you to hold our place in line for H-R-H. <laughs> it's not my fault. Standing in line all the day is boring. And I already missed the panel for Star Wars. The Force was still sleeping and then it woke up because this title makes none of the sense. <laughs> You fool! Mark Hamill was at that panel. I told you I wanted his autograph! <laughs> uh, I am sorry. I have been busy looking for the Megan Fox. Oh, oh boy, she make my horn tingle. <laughs> what, what? Whoa! Shredder and his goons! Look, his fans dressed up like turtle ninjas. Very lifelike. Those are the real turtles, you imbecile! Destroy them! Let's raise some shit! Wait, wait, guys, we can't fight in here. All the people. Plus, we will get kicked out. Nah, he brings up the good point. I still need to get the Chief Beifong statue. Bending the earth, yes. Yeah, we tried that one already, brah. Sold out. Very well. I would let you live this time, turtles. But as soon as I get out of the robot chicken panel, I assure you... <laughs> <laughs> you will meet your doom. You know, I heard that Seth Green is much taller than he looks in the movies. <laughs> is he robot or chicken? Lies! <clears throat> oh, sorry. Shredder exits with his henchmen. Well, that was disappointing. No butt kicking, huh? I'm gonna go check out those Hobbit plushies. <laughs> You know, I gotta tell you, Ref, you're a hard hobbit to break, but... You guys do your thing. I'm gonna go talk to that April cosplayer. <laughs> yeah, I think I see a Karai cosplayer out there. I'm all over that like Mikey on pizza. I'll give that a Comic-Con level. Bring a shot! <laughs> All right, now, Andrea Romano. Yes, Andrea. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, baby. That was great. That was great. So let's keep on this train of new. You guys want to see some new stuff? I think we have a, a, a clip. Do you guys want to see? Should we just play it? Um, I've set up a little bit. Basically, um, you know, we haven't aired episodes for a while, so sorry, guys, but we're coming back in August. So stay tuned. Yeah, play This it. one's a little farther ahead, Stop. so you guys are getting a real early sneak peek. I kind of rushed it along, so some caveats, no effects are in here, some temp stuff. But uh, yeah, this is a kind of interesting story where the turtles kind of make an unlikely ally that might backfire on them. It's a little, a little bit of it. Uh, let's roll it. Check it out. All right. Oh, no. Zog's ready. The beacon. Orders must triangulate now. Back off, Dino Man. <laughs> Easy, big guy. Look, man, I don't want to hurt you. And I'm not sure I can. <coughs> New shaders are close. <laughs> Come on. <coughs> Way faster than he looks. All exposed. 
explosion zero on mission status. <coughs> Command, orders! I got your orders right here. <laughs> Power to the Triceraton Empire. Destroy the Krang! You're after the Krang? Well, I got good news for you. We kicked their butts back to Dimension X. Ah! Stop! Captain Mozart, orders now. <laughs> orders for the beacon. Your uh, orders are stop. On whose authority? Uh, me, Commander uh, Zoraf in charge. Here now. Of you! Please don't back me! Zog reporting for duty, sir! <coughs> Alert tri troops to Krang! Smash them to bits! Uh, so that actually worked? Orders, sir! Oh, uh, right. So you think they're out there, soldier? Then I order you to find the Krang! Zog has the trail as Zorath commands. Head down, horns up! Well, this day is getting awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah! Fixed it! See? Now he wins! It's Rack! Dude, where are you? We've been calling. About time. All right, we're here. What's this all about? Ah! Ah! No, hold up. False alarm, Zog. Holy Chalupa. The Dino Man's real? And you tamed him? Sorta. He likes smashing stuff. Isn't that right, soldier? Hold up, Raph. Did you forget the part where he beat down half the mighty mutanimals? Just trust me, I'll explain on the way. Go get him, soldier! On the way where? The Krang! Dude, the Krang are gone. We kicked them back to Dimension X, remember? And then we ate pizza and break danced, and I threw up, cause Zog says they're still here and he can sniff them out. Huh, Zog? Zog. Zog will lead to Krang. Beacon needed! <coughs> Destruction to the mutators! You tell him, soldier! Olzog's spaceship crash landed a few months back. He's been taking out the Krang's secret bases ever since. He's on our side! And you trust him? Well, we bonded over a mutual love of destruction. What's up, Zog? You find something? <coughs> What's wrong with him? Is he sick? I'm starting to understand his backwards talk. His people, the Triceratons, need nitrogen to breathe. And the part where he calls you Commander Zoraph and does everything you say? Hey, I saw a chance to have an attack dino and I took it. What's the big deal? He needs a leader and I'm leading. I don't know about this. Well, he's a mostly rational guy. Aren't you, Zog? Stump the mutators. Man your battle station. <laughs> the invasion begins. You were saying? You were saying? It is the one called the Turtles. Whoa, Zog was right. The Krang are back. And the one called Tri, 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 Triceraton. Krang, destroy for Krang. Mikey destroys for Mikey! I don't miss these guys, but I do miss doing that. Biotroy, engage! Me and Zog will take this goon. Head down, horns up! Real dead <laughs>
pretty epic, right? Man. Yeah, it was really funny, kind of like, oh yeah, now you're gonna have Triceratons, and uh, you're gonna have to use the same sets, and he's about five feet wide. Right. Uh, yeah. So huge. it's like he's huge. He's I think he's like twice as tall as any turtle and just as wide as a turtle. Yeah. And so, the the Krognard cartoon you guys just watched. Obviously, it's not finished. That's the animatic. So you're gonna see the full episode coming up in a few months. Although it, that looks pretty close to the finished version. <laughs> it's pretty. It's supposed to be low rent animation, obviously. So, but yeah, the the new episodes coming out are just really fantastic, guys. I can't wait for you to see them. Awesome. And and who is the voice of Zogman? That's Lance Henriksen. Yeah. Lance oh, Henriksen, who was an alien. You know, he was, he was Bishop in Aliens. He was in Near Dark. He was in the Pumpkin first... Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead. The first Terminator. Yeah. Yeah, we're big Lance Henriksen fans. Yeah, He's a obviously. Guy. And, uh, you know, Bishop. he just kind of fits that character automatically so well. Nice. But, yeah, it was, it was really challenging. I think we all kind of took stab at, like, draw your favorite, uh, you know, your take at a Triceratops. And uh, everyone kind of drew the same thing. And then Felipe, right. Felipe Smith kind of fi finalized that design. And uh, it's just, he's just really amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, do you have any other characters you want to show us while we're uh, here? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Uh, well, you know, season four is coming up. And uh, with season four comes a whole slew of new characters. So let's see who's up first. OK, so the first challenge we had was, all right, you're going, uh, you're bringing the Triceratons in. There's a, you know, we're, we're opening the world up. It's a little bit more of an intergalactic battle. Uh, right. Earth is looming in the, in the, in the balance there. Right. And uh, the turtles have to kind of go out into space a little bit. Um, I've always been a really big fan of the, the Mirage stuff when they went to space around issue five. And um, what I really like is actually there, there's a manual like companion for the role playing game that was like all things turtles in space. Yeah, we're so. big fans of uh, RPG games. And, uh, you know, we love, we, we grew up playing the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles role playing game, so we had to incorporate that somehow into it. So the trick was, you know, how do you keep your turtles looking like turtles and make them able to live in space in any temperature? So there we are. We created these uh, these kind of cosmic jumpsuits for them that we've kind of dubbed the metal uh, the metal mutants. The turtles are now the metal mutants, and uh, yeah, we're pretty happy with them. There's actually uh, it's a shameless plug. Go buy the the figure at the booth at Nickelodeon. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brandon and I uh, signed them all the other night. So yeah, it, it only took like 19 hours. Yeah. I want one. It's all right. This is my favorite. Totally. All right, anytime you want to do, all right, you got to come up with something that's the most evil, the most disgusting thing possible, and then Brandon comes up with a million crazy ideas, like he should have hands that become spiders, and he should be made of living bugs, and he's the king of all insects, and then I went, yeah, I got oh. you. And then, <laughs> and then Ciro just went crazy with it and came up with something really Jeez. epic. I mean, he's one of my favorite characters of season four. He's fantastic. Lord if look, Greg. If you look close, he's got all kinds of bugs squirming around at him. And, and if uh, you guys recognize, uh, Peter Stromari does the voice. Now, he was in Fargo. He was one of the villains in Fargo with the wood chipper, if you remember that. He's played the devil in like a zillion movies, and he's a fantastic <laughs> actor, and well, he's know, perfect he's a, for Lord Dreg. He's a nihilist. He cares nothing about these turtles. Yeah, he was in The Big Lebowski. I mean, come on. I care not about your turtles. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, now that we have introduced Triceratons, you guys got to see Zog. He's, that's a Triceraton that's been separated from his, um, his like, recon uh, team. But, like, what happens when we get and Michael see Dorn. all these guys in their own planet? And we've created all the ranks. We've filled out the ranks of Triceratons. Michael Dorn being our, our key. And you guys know Michael Dorn from Star Trek The Next Generation yeah. as Worf? <laughs> You know, so, I mean, he's perfect to play the leader of the Triceratons. His a voice battle damage is on his head there. His voice is stunning. He's amazing. Right. Armagon. Right. So, we like the idea of being in space, and uh, you're going to need a bigger boat. So, <laughs> and I thought, you know, Ron Perlman, who's Hellboy. You it's still love, Shark uh, Week. You, you gotta love a shark inside of a mechanical shark. <laughs> voiced by Ron Perlman. And Hellboy is one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love the comics and the movies, so... All right, guys, we need a medical team here. Toka's freaking out. Yeah, that, Toka, Toka right there Toka is totally <laughs> losing his mind. It's awesome. All right, no, but, you know, so he's basically a giant shark that's in an even bigger shark, like, kind of like space skid sled, and he eats spaceships. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, he's he's fantastic. And we tried to, you know, pay respect to Peter Laird. I think I think I hope that I hope that Peter loves this truly. 
Finally, you guys have been asking every Johnny, single day Johnny. on our Facebooks and our social media. You guys, every, you don't you have guys, to ask about Mona Lisa anymore. This is the reason I left Facebook. Yeah, she's Mona Lisa. <laughs> she's finally coming, and Raph is gonna have a relationship with her, and yeah. she's played by. So now by, that you've mentioned it at Comic Con, am I allowed to talk about it? Because I've wanted to talk about this. For now, like, yeah, now yeah. you can finally talk about it, Sean. Like being on The Bachelor. <laughs> And, and, and she's played by Zelda Williams, who's Robin Williams' daughter, and she's a fantastic actress. Yeah, she yeah. is. So Mona Lisa, too, is, um, we tried to tie it into our storyline. I mean, we love the old stuff, but um, it, it kind of fit that she was uh, from the race of Salamandarians, which you guys may remember, Neutralizer is one yeah. as well. So she's one of his kind. She's a uh, and we'll be people. seeing and we'll be seeing more of them as well. Yeah, they're in a lot of uh, season four, so I hope you guys are excited. What you got think of that? Is that, is that it? Is that any more? Or? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, like, uh, another thing is that, you know, we're, we're really big, uh, you know, science fiction fans. Uh, you know, we, we just, we love sci-fi. We're, we're huge fans of British science fiction. Like, you know, like, uh, there's certain things like, you know, um, like a certain space uh, doctor who we're really big fans of. Doctor who? Oh, who? Doctor who? who? Uh, I don't know about a doctor, but... Doctor what? I'm actually a professor, not a doctor, thank you. Greetings, Earthlings. This is Professor Zayton Honeycutt. You may also know me as the Fugitoid. Beep! I'm currently on my spaceship, the Ulixes, flying towards your charming little muddy planet as we speak. I hope you don't mind if I borrow your Ninja Turtles for a spell. But we must stop an incredible cosmic threat of vast magnitude. No, I am not talking about my little pony. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to change my oil. Bloop! I'll see you all very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, David Tennant plays the Fugitoid. So, if you guys are big Doctor Who fans, if you like David Tennant, you're gonna love season four. <laughs> that is amazing. Those are some awesome characters, right? Yeah! Awesome, I can't wait to see these. And you said the show comes back in August, right? August 2nd, I think. We start off with um, a Turtles in Time episode, which is one of my favorites. Nice, nice, awesome. Well, we have a few minutes left. I know we got some people already lined up. We got Michelangelo right here in the front. So we're gonna wow. take some questions here. <laughs> Just real quick, because we only got a few minutes left. One question, and keep it brief, so we can get the answers out there. So go ahead, little Mikey. Um, I, I was thinking about the 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 cartoon of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's awesome. <laughs> and would Michelangelo go back to the Dimension X and be leader again? Does Mikey want to go back to Dimension X and be leader again? Dude, everything is Dimension X now, man. <laughs> it's all Dimension X. Mikey said. But uh, we do go back, don't we? What we do go back, yes. Yeah, man. It's on. It's happening. Nice costume. Yeah. Yes. Great job, buddy. Let me hear you say Booyakasha. Booyakasha! Yeah! <laughs> That's how it really will do. Really quick, is, uh, is Christian Lance here? Yes. Is he here? Fish face? Fish face. Fish face. The Christian Lance. <laughs> He does. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's a charming fish, man. Um, will Mikey ever, like, will the crane ever come back to try to take over the world instead of just um, New York? Then once they're done with their plans, go to New York when they have their huge empire? Yes. <laughs> No, uh, absolutely. Like in the new season, I mean, just keep watching. Keep, uh, as you saw, the Krang suddenly appear uh, in that clip, and they're coming back, and the storyline just gets bigger and crazier than ever. So you guys are going to love what's coming up and season four. Thanks for the question. Thank there's you. a lot of, real quick, there's a lot of, there's a lot of the crew out here in the panel, I think, out the audience, aren't there? I know the sound team's out here. Jeff's here. Who, who's here? We I see Rie. I see Rie Koga right there who drew our LARPing, who drew our picture. Right. Real quick, just stand up and wave and then we'll go back to questions. Yeah, everybody quick. that works on the show, stand up. Yay. Hey. Give him a round of applause. Woo! Yay. All right, so we're going to go out the back door. You guys harass them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
I was wondering in all the season, which is your favorite episode? Favorite episodes. Ooh, right now mine is probably it. It, it changes because I make them every two weeks, but. <laughs> It's usually the one I just finished, but when I look back fondly, I love when Leo was finally ready to go back to New York, and they, you know, the Mystic Ninja one, where they're in the woods, you know, centering themselves. It was kind of, got, got me in my heart. You have a favorite, Brian? Any other favorite? Uh, I like them all. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of all of them, but uh, I love all the Dimension X stuff. I love all the horror stuff. And, and, the, and the space season coming up is really amazing. Yeah, my new favorite one is the first episode of season four. You guys haven't seen it yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> Did any of the cast have any favorites? Uh, I don't think I could. All of them as well. Yeah. I, I just like seeing how many times you could hit Tiger Claw in the head, and, and if he survives, <laughs> yeah. he's becoming like the wily e. coyote of the show. <laughs> Steps on a rake. <laughs> Hello, my name's Alan, and I've been a fan of Teeny on T versus. Say, oh yeah, okay. <clears throat> Take two. Uh, <laughs> Just breathe, relax. It's anyway, okay, well, people. as we all know, a lot of mutants have been popping out of the world due to the turtles' coincidental accidents mm -hmm. and the Senator's well mutations experiments. I can't help but to wonder: Will there be any sort of anti-mutant movement in the future oh, seasons? Oh. Alright, so like say any kind of like anti-mutant movement or league or anything like that? Um, in season four, there's definitely a kind of anti-mutant uh, arc, that, but you'll have to see. We, we don't want to say too much because that's later on in the season, but you're going you're gonna to see a really, some really cool episodes coming out where it's humans versus mutants who want to take mutants down. Ooh. All right. And Who's you'll get win? to see Thanks, a little Alan. bit more of the Earth uh, Protection Force as well. Um, have you ever thought of making clone evil Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Ooh. Oh, clone evil turtles. We do, and we're actually going to replace Rob with uh, Sulu. <laughs> with George Takei. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Frankly. It's our own little mirror mirror. It'll be fun. <clears throat> good question. Thanks. Hey there. Um, Hi. This, uh, this is going to go to uh, Seth. Hey, um, hey, don't get me wrong. I, lo uh, I love you three, too. Oh, anyway, though. Stop um, trying to break up the band. <laughs> anyway, though. <laughs> Yoko, he told anyway, Yoko though, to ask um, Yoko. <laughs> uh, being the voice of Leonardo, um, did, uh, did the characters somehow inspire you to, um, uh, to become a, a good leader in real life? Um, cause it inspired, um, because Leo inspired me for uh, over two decades. Um, no well, pressure. A, a, I take that responsibility really seriously. <laughs> and getting to play this role, like I understand what Leo means to... The, the fans and the mythology because it <clears throat> means the same thing to me. So um, I don't know that playing this role made me any better in my in my real life. Um, I like I like being a I like being able to follow a leader as much as I I um, cherish the opportunity to lead when it's most appropriate. Um, but yeah, dude, I take that. My, Leo's my wife's favorite character. Like there was how there, convenient. There's, there's like a hey, don't mess this up kind of thing. I, there, when we Every were recasting, time I step up to the mic, so. Yeah. <laughs> but I dig it, man. I appreciate that. And the blue that you're wearing. And the blue that you're wearing. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, I can't take credit for that, but I'm with you. <laughs> we're, we're switching Leonardo to wear pink, actually, next season, so I'm sorry. About Wait, that you said Mikey was going to be pink. <laughs> I think Mikey would Mikey's look actually very a, pink. Mikey's a vegetarian hot dog today. <laughs> anyway, just send me a quick question. What's it like working with guest stars like Gilbert Gottfried? <laughs> oh, man. Gilbert Gil Gottfried Gilbert. is amazing. That's Krang Subprime. Yeah, he's great. He is. I mean, we love Gilbert, and he's just, he's hilarious. And he also loves, like, classic monsters, which yeah. is awesome. We're trying to figure out a way to do Gilbert as Dracula. Gilbert as show. Dracula would be great. But, no, yeah, I mean. something like, I want to suck your blood now. <laughs> And I gotta say, there aren't too That's many Jews nice. in the turtle world, so I'm very glad to be there. Thank you. <laughs> My question is, um, did you ever think of, like, reprogramming a foot shoulder that uh, the turtles killed and um, re-putting it back? and letting it spy on Shredder? 
Brandon, I think you found your new story editor. Yeah. Can I hire you yeah. as a writer? This is the next you, writer for Turtles, yeah. everybody. Yeah, we're actually interviewing right now. Like That was pretty good. Thank if, you. If I pay you job, in comic man. books, will you no. work for me? <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> you better get an agent quick, son. He's fielding <laughs> offers right now. Get a lawyer or an agent. Email me your contact info. Thank you. <laughs> Great Join, question. Turtles will be over Join by the then. writer's skills. I like that. I like that. Maybe. Smart kid. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you doing? Hi. Good. How are you? Thanks. My name is Nina, and I have a million questions for you. Ah, I see what you did there. But I will just ask you one very profound one. What is your favorite pizza topping? Favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. I'll say turtle. Hot fudge, marshmallow, tuna fish, and Dorito. <laughs> I'm a, simple, I'm a simple kind of cheese person myself. <laughs> but I will, I will appreciate some good pepperoni. Yeah. Yeah. I like avocado. Oh, <laughs> California boy. Yeah. Us too? Yeah. Uh, What's yours? Bacon. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm going to uh, amend mine to include bacon. Another pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Peanut butter. No. <laughs> Olives are good. Yeah. Uh, anchovy. No, I'm just kidding. I, I hate anchovy. Uh, I love all the toppings. I'm a meat lover, so. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'll round that out. I like mushrooms. <clears throat> yeah. You can tell from some of the episodes. I like Thank pineapple you, Nina. on mine. Mm. Is it, yeah. Next. My name is Riley, and I just want to know if you thought that the fight between Shredder and Splinter has shifted to be more personal between Shredder and Leonardo. Hmm. I think that's the whole point, right? Yeah, I think that's a great it's going to get to him. Yeah. I mean, we're going to see a lot more of that, but it's, it, it, that, that hits really close to home. And, and I think, you know, seeing, I think Leo's role, like taking care of his brothers and that responsibility he has, is like you see how amplified that is when he sees his master in danger. So, yeah, definitely. Awesome. This is our last question. Aww. Aww. Last, but the best. Yes, but the Aww. best. Um, I'm Caitlin, and I was wondering if you guys like pizza as much as the turtles do. <laughs> of course we do, dude. <laughs> Caitlin, what kind of question is that? Of course we love pizza as much we as the love turtles. Pizza. I'm made of pizza. I could, <laughs> eat, I could eat pizza literally for every meal all the time. Yeah. Isn't it called vitamin P? Aren't you totally. supposed to get vitamin P every day? Can't live without pizza. It's like air. It doesn't sound right coming out of here. <laughs> pizza. This is like the worst dietary nutrition advice no, that we could possibly offer. It's good for you. It's good for yeah. you. Young Americans. It's good for the soul. <clears throat> Thank you, sweetie. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Happy Comic Con, Caitlin. Thank you, darling. Caitlin, first Comic Con. Is this your first Comic Con, sweetie? Um, Oh my nice. God. <laughs> uh, for 47 Excuse me. No. I'm a vet. Raise your I'm, hand if it's your first Comic Con. How many, is this? How many is this for you? Oh, there you welcome go. To welcome, welcome to the party. Four. Thank you all for coming. Four. 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 Four years. Wow. She wow. has a panel right after this. Six years old. We gotta clear Guys, the room I'm, for her panel. I'm late for Hall H. I'm actually moderating Star Wars. Sorry, Caitlin. We'll, we'll let you. We'll let you get to your panel. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Can I just tell you, please don't tell her, but if you see April O'Neil, just, you're so much cuter. Please. Whoa. Just don't tell her, okay? Whoa. Don't tell her. Hey, April, guess what I just heard? Yeah. April, you're not going to believe what Donnie just said. <laughs> you were about to ask him out. I have my you're... back, guys. <laughs> Meanwhile, in jail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, leave it. <laughs> guys, leave this it has to been Shredder a great time. This has go been there. wonderful. Let's give a big round of applause to these guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Absolute blast. Thanks so much for coming to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles panel.